In this video from Renaissance Charge, we're going to look at our mini window motor and we're going to run it with the switching being the read switch on the trigger. So instead of there being an extra wire here um, to start it, we're going to run it with the read switch. And one end of the read switch is going to a resistor which is right here and that's a 100 ohm resistor and that can be changed to other values depending on the voltage you're running this at on the primary battery. This is the primary battery that powers the motor and this is the uh, voltmeter for that and then this is the charging bank we're going to look at here and um, Right now we've got 24 volts charging and um, so this read switch again goes to a resistor then goes to the primary positive. The other end goes to the, the gates of the transistors. We have three of them here. Um, I have a little on and off switch on the circuit board. Right now it's turned off. And this read switch has to be positioned in the, just in the right spot. We're, we're looking at running it on um, some of the, uh, there's magnets in here that are north and then south, north, south, all the way around. So there's three north out facing and three south out facing magnets. So this trigger um, read switch here is only firing on the north poles and then these coils are all only firing on the north poles. So the south pole is not being used here. You could run um, another set of wires. So you could have two wires per coil on each spot. It would be quite a bit of wire, but we've done it before. And then um, you could actually have a second read switch in a different position firing as well on the south poles with another three circuits. Um, you could also use a hall switch here and you could also put a little disc on one end and make it a little bit more stable. This is really tricky. It's a, only one little spot that it likes to be at and I, I put this little um, loop here to uh, tie the wire to the spot that I want it on. Um, which is kind of tricky. It'd be nice for us to have a little attachment to come off the side plates here to hold the reed switch. But anyway, this is just showing you how it can be done. And you can see that we'll be able to charge batteries. This battery is coming down a little bit. This is the battery bank here because it was being charged on and off as I was doing some tests here. <coughs> And so it will drop a little bit, but you'll see when we hook it up, it will start charging. And you'll see, depending on the position of the read switch, um, which determines the on time as you turn the rotor, the read switch being turned on will be um, turned, it will determine how long these coils are firing. If you don't position it right, it will either burn out um, the read switch, possibly, but more likely, if you push too many amps, which is an amp meter right here, uh, you'll see the amps will change depending on the position of the read switch. If I position that wrong, then it will draw too many amps and it will blow up these transistors, which should be heat synced right now because we're going to be pushing about 3 amps each and really beyond one amp you should be heat sinking these transistors but uh, this is just showing you the demonstration anyway um, if you do change the position of the read switch then while it's rotating it could actually want to fire it in the other direction um, if you position it lower it will want to turn counterclockwise in this setup um, these three coils have to be positioned or they have to have the same wires going in 
they can't be reversed or they'll fight against each other and they won't rotate. Um, so what I have is the inner wire going to the collector of each transistor and the outer wire, the wire that you end up with, goes to the primary positive on the circuit. And um, each one of these on the board circuits has a base resistor. Right now I only have 10 ohms on there, which probably should go higher, but I'm pushing a lot of current in the setup to charge more rapidly. So what we're going to do is run it and you'll just be able to see um, the charging rate, be able to see the amp draw. This can go really fast if it's positioned just right and have a lot of torque for 75 milliamps. Um, so you got to be careful you don't push 6 amps in that like I was just doing. <laughs> so we have to adjust things just right with our hands and I'm going to try and do this now. So I'm going to turn the switch on, position the reed switch far enough away that it doesn't interact with the magnets. You'll notice that it's going to want to kick in various directions. See how it, it'll like toggle back and forth. You can see the amps. And it can change quite a bit. So, like I said, I can take this out and position this the way I want it. Be careful about doing this and bending the reed switch because you could break the glass. I just want to demonstrate with my hands where approximately this likes to be in this setup. See, you can see how finicky it is. See, now we're only drawing one amp. We're charging pretty good. See, both the angle and location is very important to this setup. So, you gotta watch these transistors so they don't get too hot. I've already blown a couple here in this demonstration. Um, right now they're relatively cool. Then I have a tachometer here to measure the RPM. So let's um, look at this again. See, and then you have to place this in the right position. Seventeen thousand RPM. Twenty thousand RPM here. And you can see the battery charging. Pretty good here. Um, we can get this down to 20 or uh, 5, well, even 2500, sorry, 250 milliamps or a quarter amp um, draw and still charge batteries pretty good and have a tremendous amount of torque for this little motor. So let's try and look at the torque here. 
I don't have a stand on this one. See again, it's trying to find that just little spot there. Again, if you had a little disc on the front, it'd be easier. See, it's not necessarily how many amps you're pushing, how strong it will be. It can still be pretty strong. I burn my hand. That's really strong. Whoa. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Was that? Oh, the tape came off a little bit on this motor. <laughs> anyway. Pretty fast for looking at 20,000 RPM. So, so again, you can change the trigger resistance, push more or less amp, and adjust the charging rate. So it's kind of finicky with position running off of the uh, the motor magnets because they're so powerful. You have to get right in that little window in the corner. Uh, so if you had run it off of uh, other magnets, a little rotor or something, then it would be easier uh, to use a hall switch or reed switch. Or what we're doing is a photo sensor um, with our bigger model. The reason I'm doing this particular experiment is because I want to show you what can, you can do on a big window motor um, with the photo sensor that we use. And uh, that photo sensor doesn't rely on magnets. It relies on whether the window is open or closed, mechanical window. So it's a lot easier to deal with than this. But this does the exact same thing. It just turns on for as long as there's a magnetic field there. So again, you can see the charging rate and the amp draw. Uh, again, we want to put a heat sink on here because if we're going to push any more than one amp on these transistors, it's going to get hot, as you can see. 170 Fahrenheit is getting up there to starting to affect the performance of the transistor. It'll still be able to function fine up to over 200 degrees, but um, you still want to have a heat sink on there. I didn't put it on because I knew I'd be blowing out some of these transistors under the experiments that we're running. Um, beyond that, we have, um, again, here's the board, and there's um, the trigger wire, or trigger bus bar right here, which there's the hull, one side of the hull switch connecting right there. And it's just the basic circuit that we've been using. Uh, you don't have to charge batteries, but like I said, we're charging 24 volts instead of just 12 volts. We're running off of 12, and we're charging 24. Um, and you could charge higher than that with this circuit. So that we could replace this with a hall switch, but you'd have to have one more wire uh, going to the ground, the negative terminal. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much the same. The hall switch might be a little bit more preferable.
And you'll find with this circuit is that running one of these coils, while you have all three coils mounted, you actually want to try and run them at the same time because they interact with each other somewhat. So um, if you run, you can run one at a time, but you'll have to change some of your resistor values. And then again, this positioning will change a little bit when you take the coils off. So I ran them by themselves, and then I had to determine which wire was which on here so that they wouldn't be fighting against each other, like I said. See, what happens is once you apply um, power through the reed switch to the gates and the transistors, um, the current will flow in a spin motion. Depending on which wire you're hooking up, it will turn one way or the other. So if you have it the wrong way, one will fight against the other and won't run. So that's that.